that it's connecting this takeoff project with that SAGE estimate. So it tells me there are no bridges associated because I'm just starting this with this uh, project. Do you want to create a new bridge? Well, we'll say yes. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll just call this the La Quinta Hotel since that's the uh, estimate. <clears throat> we'll say this is a La Quinta bridge. I'm going to go out here to the estimate file and find I had created an empty estimate prior to our meeting today. So this is a La Quinta building. It's just an empty estimate out in SAGE. <clears throat> I'm going to say that that's the estimate that's linked to this project. And you notice it's also automatically bringing up this project because it knows I'm coming from uh, from dimension inside this project already. So it just set it up for me. Now when I say OK, Bridge is going to go out and find this estimate. It's going to find the database that works with that estimate <clears throat> over in SAGE, and it's going to display it in this window. So what I'm seeing here right now is literally the database coming from SAGE, and I'm reading it real time as we work here. So this particular measurement, which was done over in, in uh, uh, e-takeoff dimension, let me actually show you what that was. This was an assembly, a five-inch slab assembly. And you notice when you take it off, it looks just like these over here, uh, uh, the very same kind of assembly. I'd just taken this off earlier. So this was a 105 slab on grade assembly over in, Bri in uh, dimension. And over in bridge, it, you know, you don't have to use the same number scheme, but obviously that makes it a lot easier to keep these things linked and understand what's going on as an estimator. So really, all I have to do to send this over to estimating is grab, grab the measurement itself and just tell Bridge, just drag it and say, where should it go? Well, I want it to go over here to that assembly in Sage. And when you drop it on there, it opens up the uh, window that you see over in Sage with all the variables. And it opens up all of the estimate detail that you're, you know, all the items that you're going to see over in Sage. Uh, and that puts that in this pane. So you now see everything that Sage is wanting from the, uh, uh, from the uh, takeoff side. Mm -hmm. Over here, we have the takeoff information. Now, in this case, you notice the way that dimension works. When I click on any measurement, the results are always shown up here in the quantity list. So in this case, this measurement had a, an area of 37 uh, square feet, concrete strength, et cetera. And you notice that information at 37 square feet is right here. This measurement information is literally the information that's coming over from uh, the takeoff dimension. So really, everything's set to go here in that we have the appropriate uh, slab. We've dropped the measurement, this measurement, onto that slab. But it's the very first time we've ever used it. So because it's the first time, Bridge is a learning system. You actually teach it how things should work between the two systems. So in this case, Sage is asking for an area. Well, I have an area over here in the measurement. So I'm just going to take that area, and I'm going to drag it over to the area field. And you notice it uses the same color. It color encodes these, and it tells you that this area is coming from the area in takeoff. That's the variable. So these are now linked. These are mapped together. And we also have a perimeter. And so I'm going to grab this perimeter, and I'm going to drop that in there. Now I've got a perimeter and an area tied together. And literally, you, at this student, point, let's say you drag and drop into the wrong, into the wrong spot. Can you? Well, then, just, then all you do is just, just, uh, just click on this, wipe it out. Uh, uh -huh. You know, you just wipe it out, and uh, let's see here. It'll warn you that you're destroying that link, and then you just start over and just do it again. That's all. Uh -huh. But once you see what you've got here, then the other variables, even if you had 50 of them here, like we have concrete strength, wire mesh, you could have all kinds of underlay, sand, gravel, whatever you have here, you can just fill those out just like you do in Sage. So over here, I might put in uh, 5,000 PSI concrete, and I might put in wire mesh size. And then I fill those out. And then I add the pass, just like I do in Sage. And I send it to the estimating system. But in this case, I'm going to change things up a little bit. Because I do have a, uh, a concrete strength, because I do have it, I'm going to use that too. 
and because I also have a wire mesh that I asked for, I'm going to do that too. So if the information is here in the takeoff, and that's up to you as to how you want to set that up, then you can also map that so that you can ask all of your variable questions over in Sage, not, oh, I'm sorry, over in Dimension, rather than in Sage. Again, it's a choice. If you don't set it up that way, then you just pull over the, the variables like the perimeter and the area. The rest of it you just answer right here. Okay. Now I'm also going to take the section, which is the location code, I'm going to drag it down there too, and I'm also going to drag the bid code down. Notice here are your WBS codes, and you can fill those out any way you want before you send it over to Sage. At this point, I then can take the pass, add the pass, calculate it, and send it over to the estimate side. So let's do that. Let's actually go in here and set this up the very first time as I just showed you. So I'm very quickly going to drop it in. I've got my variables. I'm going to drag over the area. I'm going to drag over the perimeter. I'm going to bring in the concrete strength because I have it, although I don't need to. I can fill it in here. And I'm bringing in the wire mesh. So now, as I set these up and I bring in the bid code and the bid item, I'm going to add the pass, which calculates all the quantities. And then I'm going to send it over to Sage. And this information is now in Sage. Now here's the important point. If I bring in, I've got more takeoff here. So I could grab, you know, here's another slab. I could just drag it right in. Or I could go to what's called the measurement list. And instead of looking for everything on the plans, uh, all over the plans, I could actually say, let's reorganize this list. And I'd like to see everything organized with all of the slabs in one place through the entire project then you'd see all the slabs in the entire project right here. But, and then I can drag from here. I could say, uh, take these uh, section two slabs and drag all three of them over here and we see the same drag thing. Drag multiple into one Yes, location. you can drag can multiples. You... Yep, if I drag the three section twos here and I drag them over to the slab on grade, uh -huh. you notice it sets up three passes, just like okay. Sage. And so you got the three passes. However, I'm gonna show you something slightly different. Instead of doing that, uh, I'm going to use the power of bridge that's now in the system. Because I had done one takeoff, and you notice how I taught it and mapped all the variables, I can now go to the automatic mode. Uh -huh. There are different modes that this runs in. I can go to the automatic mode and the system bridge will actually find all of the, ver all of the open uh, uh, objects for me. And here's the same list of all the slabs. And if you're wondering which one is which, you can right click and drill down, it'll find it for you. You literally can have the system find all the takeoff for you. So in this case, I got three section twos here. I'm going to take these three section twos. I don't even have to drag them anymore. Uh, let's gonna, we're gonna flip this around. I have a different sequence. I'm gonna see all the, uh, the uh, slabs or whatever assemblies over in Sage and find all the measurements that are going to go to those assemblies. In this case, I got these three section twos. And all I have to do is drag them into the window. I don't even have to drag and find the measurements. I find them right on here. It sets three passes up. I'm going to add the passes. It generates all three of them. And everything's ready to go. My location code, bid item, etc. cetera. I'm gonna make one change before we continue and I'll explain what this means later. But I'm going to change this to fully automatic, and I'll show you what that does in just a second. So ready now to send to the estimate. So I just say send to the estimate, and all of that information goes over to the estimating system. Now, as of now, I, as of now, you have not opened the precision estimate yet. You're just working with that's two right. modules. You're working. That's right. With the table. I'm sending over okay. everything over to Sage. From so if I'm imagining maybe two monitors. One monitor will have will have dimension, and another monitor will have a bridge, right? Exactly. You could do exactly that. Yep. So you need to log. So now in. let's continue on. Mm -hmm. So now I need to see. I'd like to review what's been sent to the estimates. Let's say. So I go out here to the review mode. The review mode shows me what has been sent to the estimate, and where it went. So here are each of the measurements I've sent. And if I right click and drill down, 
you can see there's that first one I did. And if you drill down, there's a second one, et cetera. You can literally see the measurements that I sent to the estimate. That's what this is all about. The review mode shows me what has been sent to the estimate, either measurement by measurement by measurement, or click this button, you can see the assembly and stage and where the measurements, you know, where the measurements came from. These four went to that assembly, either way. Now, also, I have a button up here in, in dimension that says hide assigned measurements. So when I click this button, it literally shows me that these four have been sent over to uh, the estimate also. So I can either see it in the bridge side, or I can click this button and it will show me the four that have already been sent. Mm. Okay, now, I can now continue, we can go back into the manual mode where I have all my you know, assemblies, or items actually, either way, and I can start dragging the rest of these over. But the way Bridge works, because it's a learning system, remember what I did earlier, I had gone into that one uh, uh, assembly when we did the mapping, and the last one I sent over, I went to this little window and I changed it to fully automatic. Do you remember yes. that? Uh -huh. Well, because I did that, I told Bridge, look, you already know about the slab over in the takeoff side, and you know about the slab in Sage, and you know that those two are mapped and linked together. From now on, I would like to make that automatic. I don't even want to have to go hunt the thing down. I just want to send it over to Sage. In other words, I have all of the answers I need over here in takeoff. And if I've set my system up in a way that I have defaults or you know, anything that I need to generate the assembly is already answered over here, if that's the case, then I can go to the fully automatic mode and the system finds all those same measurements that are left over, but now you notice they have this little green check mark which tells you that they are fully automatic. It'll tell you where they're gonna go and if you're and if you want to know where you know where they are, you can drill down and it'll find that measurement. But in this point, you no longer have to even drag and drop them, et cetera. It now knows it when you click the automatic button, it will find every measurement in the entire drawing, all the drawings of any type that it's ever learned, whether it's a slab or a wall or whatever it is, mechanical component, you know. And all I have to do is hit this button which says submit the fully automatic assignments to the estimate. Well, so when I so my that, question to you would did the proper workflow would be you do all measurements first, and then you assign uh, your measurements to assembly or items, or you or, or you do estimate pretty much like as you go. Especially especially it's like for mechanical side because if we have a duct work, mm -hmm. uh, we may have let's say different section like 22 by 10, and then we have a Y, and then right. it, and we have a reducing Y, and then we, we go to, let's say, 20 by 20. So we when we do takeoff, we do kind of section, and, and each size is a path. Well, literally, because of the way Bridge is designed, the the correct workflow through Bridge is, is however you want to do it. Uh, in, in some cases, you would do it one by one. In other words, as you do the measurement, you can drop it and send it over, or you can do the measurement and just click on the auto and it'll find it for you and you drag it and send it. Or you can go automatic on some of them and not others, depending on whether you need to integrate or interface uh -huh. with those measurements. Totally up to you. For in this case, I have all of these set up as automatic, but I could take one of them, one of these measurements, and drop it in and work with it just by itself and send it to the estimate and do the others automatically your choice. So in this case, I'm just going to finish this off and send all of those estimate items over to the estimate. And now they're all over there. And if I click the button to bring it all back, that's what was in the takeoff. And this is now what's been sent. And the review mode shows me all those measurements that were sent over to the estimate. And you can so still now, overwrite them now and unsend or resend? Like if you want to do one, a change to one of the ones that you just sent? Or is well, that that's, you, may, you bring up a very good point. How do you change things? And the problem is a lot of the integration with Sage today doesn't allow changing things because when you change them, these systems, the other systems generally rewrite the measurement, the information over in the estimating system. Right. But with Sage, it's like a one-way street, right? Yeah. So the problem is 
when you rewrite it, it's not necessarily bad. It gets the new measurement dimensions or whatever a quantity over there, but you lose everything you've ever done with that up to this point. So if you have pricing, uh, productivity factors, waste, crews, you lose all that over in the estimate side because it starts over. Well, what we do in Bridge is we can actually make changes. So let's let's actually do that. Let there's a David can can take you through this in more detail. But there's a button here that says edit points. So if you have a measurement and you want to change it, you can either edit points, or you notice we show you a little uh, tool tip here that actually shows you the shortcut key. It says pressing the E key will invoke this command. So I can either click the button or I can just press the E key. Cursor, you notice, has a little designator next to it, which looks just like that button. So you can now tell from the cursor that you're in that change mode. And I'm just going to grab this measurement and modify it. Okay. Now, in addition to changing the dimensions of that, I'm going to also say that uh, that it's uh, got a spec change, so it's 4,000 psi concrete because of that. So now I'm going to go into uh, let's see. Let's say I'm going to the manual mode wherever I was. When I come back into the review mode, notice that one of these has a new icon. This icon, these are filters. One of them is unchanged. And this one is things that have been sent to the estimate that have been changed. So I'm going to turn off all the unchanged because obviously that's exactly what you know I expect over there. And I'm going to concentrate on just this one that's been changed. So all I have to do is drag it or double click on it, brings it into bridge, and it says, hey, you made some modifications to this thing. You've changed the area, concrete strength is 4,000, and you have a new perimeter. Are you okay with this? So what I'm going to say is, yeah, I am. I want that modification to go over to Sage. And I just click this button, and it applies all of these changes. Notice the 25 PSI concrete is gone, and we now have 4,000. And I'm also going to double click up here, and I'm going to say this was changed so that I can see that later in the estimate. I'll show you what happens there. Now I'm ready to just update the estimate. So I send that to the estimate, and that change has now been sent over the estimating system. So let's uh, let's close this now, and let's go to the estimate. And I'm going to show you what the estimate result looks like over there. Let me ask so you while we go into the estimate. Mm -hmm. What would be a right workflow? Let's say I did the estimate, um, and then addendum came, and uh, there is some changes within the drawings, OK? Mm -hmm. And I would like to open new drawings. and most likely I have to create like a new file, right? So it looks like in order for me to find change between new drawings and old drawings, I have to have I have to redo complete the takeoff, right? Um, mm, well, not necessarily. David will take you into how you over you know, how you look at overlays, we call those overlays or or comparisons between drawings, but you'll be able to see the differences in the drawings make the change uh, uh, to the drawing, literally bring all of the measurements over into the new drawing, the addendum, and then make the change there. And then you still just update the existing estimate. But it will it will update existing estimates maybe with a new location or, yeah. let's say, a WBS. Yep, new WBS project, project, whatever you do. And say changes for addendum, blah, 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 right? Right, right, that's right. So let's open this estimate. I'll actually show you what the changes look like. Let's put this into the assembly order. Here's my takeoff. There are all the slabs. Let's go to that second one that I took off, this one here. Let's review it. This is the one that had the three passes in it. So there are the three passes because you took three different slabs and dropped them into one assembly over in bridge. And there they are, each one of the concrete strengths, et cetera. All of that's there. You have your audit trail. And then you notice up here, here's this one that says changed. Because I typed that right in over in Bridge, it shows up right on the spreadsheet here. And let's uh, let's take a look at this one. We'll review that assembly. Notice we have at 815, 2,500 PSI concrete, 37 square feet. At 826, we negated that. See the minus one up here, took it all out. And then at 826, we changed it to 112 and 4,000 PSI concrete. And here's your location, your bid code that came over, et cetera. So you have your audit trail right there in the estimating system. And you can even go this far. You notice this little 
triangle, blue triangle up in the corner of each one of these cells, that tells us that that quantity came from bridge, from dimension, you take off dimension. And if you'd like to go back and see the part of the drawing that actually created that quantity, you can do that. There's been an enhancement in SAGE. They have a new button up there now called Drill Down. Or you can right click, let's go to that uh, concrete here, right click and drill down to you take off bridge either way. And when you do that, we close the estimate down, open up bridge, and you can synchronize. Let's actually go down here and drill down. And you'll literally see the page, the measurement, and all the detail for that measurement that supports that uh, entry over in Sage. Yeah, going further down, so your, you made the addenda, you made the change, and obviously it maintained the data from the previous passes. So you have yes. the data maintained, you can always look back historically. Can you right. do that with a visual representation on the plans as well, or is that measurement lost? Like is the previous the original? Speak, lost? You mean the original measurement that was here before? Correct. Uh, David, can you help me with that? Can you save those original oh, measurements? You made changes. You changed that measurement. Yeah. So it's, it's the same measurement. You just made changes to it in this scenario. Right. Now, in, the, yeah. in your scenario of the addenda, right, um, theoretically, you're going to take the original drawing, and we're going to compare it to the new addenda drawing, and we're going to lay it on top, and then we're going to copy, we're going to move the measurements from the original to the addenda drawing. We'll do that for you automatically. Um, and so then they're moved, and now they're the same measurement, but they're on a new drawing, and you make the changes. So we never, it, it, it doesn't keep the original measurement and a changed measurement, okay? Because you change the measurement, you've actually changed the original measurement to something new. So we don't keep the original. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, so so I just follow down this path, if we want to maintain a previous set, set point, like a previous date, price point in our database. We don't want to update the entire estimate and lose the previous renditions of it. We want to be able to open a previous um, estimate and see that exact price and everything that was in that, you know, let's say at bid time versus that addenda. So should we just copy the entire thing, the entire estimate to an addendum one estimate in order to be able to see both the measurements and the data in SAGE? You probably should, yeah. I would, you know, you'd continue forward with this base estimate that you are feeding from Bridge because you want to keep that link. I would just make copies of that estimate at different time points then over in the Sage side and save those as your, you know, as your historical points. So if I did that, if I if I made a copy on Sage side and I made a copy of the dimension side, do is there a way to maintain the link so I have both of those? So I have the visual representation at that date point saved to each other, still linked, and then now I have two copies that I've made changes to and they're linked to each other, or am I going to cause a lot of problems where they're all going to be linked to? Well, you, know, you, you just create a new bridge. Take right? a new bridge, is that what you said? Yeah, so well, you have, for, so for example, you've got this, this project right here with yep. the current data and uh, linked to a bridge to a current estimate. Then you yep. could make a copy of this project, make a new bridge to your new addenda estimate, right? Correct. And then they would be linked. So I, theoretically, this is my opinion. Curtis, you might want to see if I'm wrong, but yeah. you'd have two, two full projects. One is the original project, uh, and it's linked to an, uh, an estimate. And then the new project, which is actually a copy, rename it, and then link to a new estimate, which is the addenda version. Perfect. Yeah. So you just make. Yeah. You do the bridge to the new. That makes sense. That makes perfect. Yeah. Sense. The only the only problem there might be that it, just because you're copying the estimate and the takeoff, et cetera, the bridge connection is those estimate uh, takeoff items are no longer in that other estimate. It might be reflected in the totals, but the links are no longer there. Um, the copy. So uh, yeah, another way to do it, you could also. As David was saying, you could make a backup copy of the entire project and a copy of the estimate at that point. That project could reflect then, you know, that particular point in time between the two, and you can reference them. But your your bridge connection would be, be lost. lost. You wouldn't be able to do. You wouldn't be able to go back into a drill down and, and other things because your bridge connection is with the original. 
not with Correct. Unless, copies, unless you, you can do the copies. If everything, yeah, the if every single measurement was automated, then we then we would be fine, right? Because then we would just be able to rebridge. You know, every if you had set up yes, if you had set up everything is automatic, right. then you could take any existing takeoff and instantly create an estimate of it at that point. You right. Could, just just future changes that we made. You know, tweaks or adjustments we made in Sage, yeah. those would be lost. Understand that. Yeah, so you just want to be careful when you're working with that. You, you understand, right? You're getting into a, an area where it's a little tricky. You have to be careful right. what you're doing, right? Uh, yeah. uh, guys, what I will be leaving probably like in five minutes, would you quickly show, you mentioned like overlay, how overlay works and how it works with the bridge and how it works with the with the estimate because we often have addendum one, addendum two, addendum three, and it takes sometimes time to compare what we had before and what Why do we, we have do that? now. We're basically done with bridge because what you've seen is basically how things get transferred back and forth and okay. you know, drilled down, well, linked back. To see how that would work with so, bridge, though. Yeah. Well, well, really, overlay with bridge, with bridge. When, you do, when you do an overlay, whatever adjustment you make to the drawing, every change, et cetera, you just update the estimate with those changes in the bridge, just like we did with this this change here. But right, David, right. if you can go back to dimension, uh, let's put it on David's uh, system, and David can take you through the overlay portion of how that works, the draw and compare function of. Uh, All you're doing is changing the background. You're not changing right. anything. You know, so so the changes that you make are actually in, like he said, the measurements themselves. The overlay is just going to be a visual representation. But yeah. Right, and, uh, and what you do with the overlay is, like in this example right here that we're looking at on the screen, you would, you would put the new drawing on top of this, and then you'd tell the program, okay, I need to use the new drawing, so copy or move all of the measurements from this drawing to the new drawing, then you'd make your adjustments. So th we, we're linking now from bridge to the new drawing. You're making your adjustments, and that's updating the estimate based on, on uh, the adjustments that you're making on the new drawing. It's all the same. It's just now on a different drawing. To make well, that's right. why would I need to move the old measurements into the new drawings if the only thing I'm looking for, let's say, for example, I mean, it, it could be a different situation. But if I'm just looking for the difference between well, the old system, drawing, the overlay, the yeah. overlay section or the drawing compare portion of of, of uh, dimension will let you see just the differences between them. And you can see that on the screen, you know, between red and blue lines, kind of maybe what you're used to in, in uh, PlanSwift. But what we do for you is we say, okay, the addendum is a new drawing. It actually is a different drawing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the measurements from that other drawing so you don't get confused. We're gonna move them over to this new drawing automatically. We'll automatically get convert for any uh, scale changes, et cetera. And once that change is made and it's all moved over, now you make the individual change you need to make. And as you move forward, everything's on the addendum rather than it being split up amongst all kinds of drawings now. Yeah, you only have one drawing to worry about. But I understand. But for addenda, I will need to create like a new estimate, probably new file for the, for the addendum drawings, right, in Sage if you want to maintain a previous set point. Right. Yeah, if you want to maintain the previous, what we would say is you make a copy of everything at that point and just store that as a reflection at that time. You right. keep if going you, if forward you said you with move the, the, the measurements to the drawing or you could copy them. If you can copy them, can you take all of the previous drawings? Yeah, but the problem, the problem with copying is that, of course, that means all the other stuff is still left in the estimate. That's what I meant, though. Can't you just, can you go back to that drawing and make all of those measurements a negative pass or no? No, you can't. Auto, you no, can't because bridge. Model. What negative. bridge does? Bridge says that's a measurement. I'm going to make sure it's over in estimating. No, right, but the make moment, sure it's over the there as a negative pass. No. Yeah, but the moment you start making adjustments like that, bridge. Now you're playing a game of is that really over there or is that not, etc. Bridge says what I see in the estimate side that you've taught me. You know that you've set up. It I changes. will make those changes over in the estimate side for you. Right. It's it's a. Yeah. Uh, is just automatically built that way. Sure. I use like a different location, a different area with the old drawings and right. the new drawings. And then right. Move it. Yeah. Well, with WBS codes, we can achieve the same thing. Right. Okay, gentlemen. I will be leaving shortly and.
Natasha, Zach, and Dennis will stay and, and, and please would educate them as much as you can within one hour, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why don't we, uh, uh, why, I tell you what, David, let's, uh, uh, Dennis, why don't you make David the presenter and let's head over to uh, Dimension itself and the takeoff side and David can take us through that. I will do that. Hmm? You're late. Uh, I assume that this is David. It's interesting. Yeah, that's me. Sorry about that. I I thought I put my name in, and it's not there. I apologize. That's okay. Well, you're the only one without a name, so I was I had a bad, pretty good <laughs> chance to get the right one. But I actually have a name. Whatever, HTML5 viewer. That's me. That's, <laughs> that's your new name. HTML5. <laughs> now, give me a minute while I find out why my entire mechanical project is not here. That's really bizarre. Uh, Don't scare us. You're trying to sell us. <laughs> that was, <laughs> um, oh, could be. Hold on. I'm using a. I'm using a beta version of the program, testing. Um, uh, some things so hang on a minute while I adjust this and I gotta start over so give me one second I apologize I forgot I was on this test version so that could be my problem so hold the phone I'll do this as quick as I possibly can Did that? Uh, did you guys kind of get a feel for Bridge? By the way, did that seem to make sense? Yeah, that Bridge makes perfect sense. Uh, we're just trying to figure out the finer points of how we're going to make our assemblies tie into it. Um, obviously, we're going to have multiple measurements. We won't just have area. We'll have area, linear, and uh, counts all in the same grouping. You know, the same assembly. So yep. All you do is drag those three variables over, and any other variables you just set up in takeoff. Well, obviously, and, yeah, uh, but, but if I were to try to fully automate, uh, could I group those to where it would know that that linear, that area, and that count all go to that assembly? Or pass. You know what I mean? So that we're not, so, so that each job that we create using that one assembly, it's going to have, you know, all we're telling it is the size and making adjustments that way without having to drag and drop. Well, remember, like, you only drag once. That's what I mean, yeah. So as, long as, as long as we can standardize a single assembly for, yeah. for in the right. database, as long as right? you not can just say, for job. Here's a measurement, and it should be assigned to this assembly in SAGE, and you map it and teach it, the, you know, where the variables uh, connect. And yeah. at that point, from that point forward, it knows that across all projects. It's, it's perfect. Very so it's not, that. yeah, it's not, it's not a per project. This is not a, a per project. No, 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 no. If you didn't get that, I'm sorry. That is a one-time thing, and that, that mapping is now complete forever. Right, and so no matter how many counts I have, I can ha I just call the count a different thing, and it knows just by the name of the count that well, I can have multiple counts. Well, remember, if you're using, if you're, well, you would set up a different measurement over in in, in uh, the dimension, which Dave is going to show us here, and okay. you would give that count a name, right? You would say okay. this count is for this particular piece or part or whatever, and then you relate that to the assembly over in Sage, and now once that's done, whenever you use that count, it now yeah. is related to that assembly. Perfect. Yeah. So it goes by name. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't treat counts as counts. I can have multiple no. counts the same. Assembly. No, you don't want to do that. You, I mean, you could because you notice on his screen he's got that red dot count. Yeah. Well, that's a generic count. You could use that, and you could drop it anywhere. It wouldn't necessarily have a. You could build a relationship, but now you got this one count. No, what like you, you really said, want you to have do a, a set count up called elbows and a count yes, called Yes, exactly. Feet. Every type of count you do would have its own measurement, so that it shows up with its own color, its own designator, its own symbol, all of that. And Perfect. then, of course, when you drag that over to Bridge, 
then it actually, you know, Bridger will actually find where it belongs in the Sage list of assemblies, just like I did with that slab. It found that five-inch slab wherever it was used, and then it automatically said, you know, that belongs over here in Sage. Now, you do have to know that either if you want it completely automatic, so that you just go over to Bridge and hit a couple buttons, and it all goes over to Sage, then you need all your variables over in the Sage or in the, the dimension side, and that will take a little bit more work to set up. But which is, otherwise, which is what we're, our plan is that yeah, we're going to try to right. put the effort up front so that we can use this thing quickly and okay. rapidly. All right, well then, yeah, that'll take some work. Otherwise, you literally can use it the day you get it, as I did, just by dragging it and mapping it, and then from that point forward, you just fill in the variables that are not over in the dimension side. You just fill them in in the pane, just like you would in Sage. Sure. But if you and want I, to make it fully automatic, that will take work, but you can do that. Yeah. Uh, now there are. I uh, will say this in full disclosure. You, if we we do not have access to the inner guts of Sage, you know, through the interface they give us. So you might have, like, if you're using two-dimensional item tables, that might be kind of difficult to to get set up over in the dimension side because we don't have access to that table to show you what variable shows up, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if right, you got all can, kinds of can, variables, we can write the assembly, in and out. rip that item table from a variable, which you can feed into any variable, right? Like as long as we, it's a two-step process, but we could still do it. No? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, here's the thing. If you can grab the variable over in the dimension side, right, then and you can map it then over into Sage, then you're on your way. As long okay. as you can get the variable over in the dimension side, then right. yes, we can pass it to Sage. Okay. My only uh, point was if you've got a two-dimensional table and it's based on two different variables, it creates a third variable and that doesn't even show up until you, you know, you have the the correct values in there, we, we just can't duplicate that because we don't have access to the Sage side. That's all I'm saying. That makes sense. Now, it looks like currently you're showing mechanical ductwork layout, right? I mean, on this... Yes. On this yeah, I'm going to let David uh, respond to that. David, why don't you... So, take if, I, if I have a ductwork that is 24, 24 by 24 by, let's say, 10 foot long, it looks like the only the, the only measurement like you have right now, right? So the only measurement that I will be able to send to Sage will be length and the actual size, 24 by 12, I have to type in, right? Or just just manually choose one size, 24, let's say width 24 and depth. Well, well you know, right? this, the, the, what I have here is very simplistic, okay? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very simplistic way to do things. Uh, you can do things way more sophisticated than this. I created, since there's so many duck sizes, right. I, cre I created a simple way to have one item and type it in, and it automatically calculates what I need. So, can you show instead me? of... Instead of creating a million traces, for example, that are each size a duct, what I do is, let me see which one that is. That is rectangle duct, duct uh, square foot. Where is it? Rectangle square foot. So what I do is I create one item, and I'm just going to do a measurement here from here to here, right? I type in what it is. Let's say it's 20 by 24 or whatever, and what it does is it calculates this and you can have it calculate whatever you want. It names it 20 by 24. It puts the description on it 20 by 24. It scales it to um, 20 wide, and it also calculates the square foot, and I've got the length. So, so how did that's you, my did you get it to grab the name from the, from the it's measurement? A, it's, a, it's an extension. It's our assembly function that uh, is internal that tells, that tells it to grab the first part of the name from here, grab the second part of the name from here, put the X in between it, and then just name it that, and, and re rename it that. And that, that, that programming side of it is, is easy to do when creating assemblies, or is that something about the drill? Because you know, I, I want to do that same thing, part, obviously, with multiple variables. Uh, yeah, the problem is that is something that, that you can do inside Dimension. When you, the problem is when you get to Sage, Sage doesn't have that ability to throw that name in there. You could... But it's the description, that so that's yeah, the description in the description, it. so it shows up as an auxiliary field, you know, like your 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 uh, 
uh, location or a WBS code, code location, you can make it yeah. a WBS code, something right, of that so, so we can feed that information to a WBS? Yeah, I think you would be able to make that a, uh, let's see, if you put that in the description. Yeah, right. if you use it as a location code in SAGE, you would be able to do it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you but, should be able to do that. Now, just and the remember, reason, when uh, I'm sorry, David. Uh, go ahead. Here. The go only ahead. thing you need to know is that depending on, you know, you can always work between the two systems to make them kind of work together the best they can. But if you've got your information in SAGE and your database already set up, just know that if you can get the variables that are in that SAGE database over here, right, meaning you can see them here, then you can fill them in here also, and anything you fill in here will feed that database over in SAGE. So any assembly, however you've got your ducting set up, et cetera, any variables that you fill in today to make estimating work, you can also fill in over here, you know, to make them feed the estimate side. So it, it really, a lot of it is dependent on what you do in SAGE, and we can, you know, work to, to map those things then and you fill in the variables uh, however you do in SAGE, you can do that over here too. And then of course that information is already there. So like you saw me do in Bridge, I can either fill in the variables that SAGE is asking at the time that I'm sending it over, or I can set it up with a bit of work so that up there in that quantity list on the upper right corner up there, uh, you can put in the variables that SAGE is gonna ask. And then you can ask for them here and you don't even need SAGE open. You could just ask for them. Your bridge doesn't even be open. You just Perfect. fill in the stuff. And then How do we open. add the extra links? Let's say if there is a vertical five feet uh, run, I need to add to 24 by 12. How do I change that? Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. You could add a variable to type in the length. You could, um, that's probably the best way to do it. If you have extra length or you want a vertical rise or a, you know, a drop or whatever, uh, you could add a variable in here to do that, and then you could add those together and have the total length. Is there a way to actually have that extra variable uh, uh, map to a different WBS within the same assembly? Like, can I send killed. some variables to one right. WBS and other variables to a different? Sure. WBS? You can send any variable to any variable that you want in, from eTakeoff to Sage. Right. Now so within the same assembly, it, it can go to you know two different locations even, or no? Well, sure. you, you again, That's your it. variables, any variable up uh, David, if you point to the quantity list, any of those variables up there in that quantity list can be sent over to Sage either just the way they expect through the, uh, through the variables, you know, mapping them. Or remember how I dragged some of them down into the detail pane where yep. the WBS codes were? Well, any variable up there can be dropped into the WBS codes. So I could set it up so that one of those variables goes into three different WBS codes if I wanted to. Okay, perfect. But, yeah, that's, I'm used to the passes going kind of, kind of the passes being stuck going into the same WBS. You know, everything in one pass goes to the same WBS is how we usually use it. I well, realize. every you're right, and now that is still true because of the Sage rules. Because we're feeding Sage, it has to work that way. That means that anything that's on any assembly that's got multiple passes, those whatever you see for the WBS layout is obviously going to be true for all the passes. But what I'm saying, if you had three WBS codes down there, you could feed three variables individually, one variable into one WBS, the second into another one, and the third into a third WBS code. You, they would be the same across all passes, but you could have three WBS codes from three variables. Oh, I see what you're saying. So don't, you actually have to use three different categories of WBS. Yeah, you in would in that case that. because Sage Sage has that limitation of all passes having the same, you know, assignments because they only have one. The same uh, entry for that WBS has to be this. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yep, Unless yep. you treat it as a separate assembly. Well, yeah, now if you take it off separately, then of course you can do whatever you want. But can if you're you adding passes map together. measurement type to multiple assemblies, or is that getting weird? Uh, you know what? Uh, you, can, you can assign different, you, you, for instance, one measurement can be actually assigned to multiple assemblies. You can do that, but then you lose the automatic capability because at that point, we don't know what you mean. 
But if you do set up one measurement to five assemblies, for instance, then and you map those five individually, and then you take that measurement and you drag it over to the Sage side, you know, over into the estimate side, and you say, I want it to be on assembly one, it will remember the mappings and it'll work with assembly one. If you take that measurement drop on assembly two, it will remember the mappings for that assembly. So it will remember how a an individual measurement could be distributed among many different assemblies, but now your manual, you have to tell us what you want because at that point we can't fully automate it. Okay. So what I did, just to keep going really quickly, asked about extra length. I just created a same exact function, but I added, uh, you know, I just called it riser real quickly. And if it's an extra, you know, eight feet, then what it does is it takes the eight feet that I entered, adds it to the length that I measured, and I have a variable formula that totals that together. Okay. Right. So the, you do something like that, for Perfect. example. But again, now, obviously, you wouldn't see this anywhere in the drawing. No. It would, it would no. point you back to this exact measurement. That's what that's what they're saying. You right. You can point that back that to it and right. find it, and then see that you put in eight. Right. Now we do have a function that's called a, a, a riser specific function. We call it riser. It doesn't have to go up. It can go down. Whatever. Right. Go up and down from this measurement. And at this point, I could instead of entering it here, I could enter it here. Right click and say. Uh, add the, de the the riser length at this point, and it'll show you at this point that uh -huh. it's uh, that there's a there's a eight Ex foot. It would display eight foot right here connected to this point. That's a that's a actual function that's built into the program that you could use. Right. The only difference is you have to you have to type the sizes in again. Right. That's just a second step, but it's visually represented. It makes more. Yeah. Sense. You could. Yes. It's it's a visually represented thing. So I could I could make this extension using a pre-built riser extension and have that function at each point that I want to be able to enter a point, a, a length, and it would be in here. I'd still use the same, I'd measure it, I'd put in my width and height, um, and I'd have the riser stuff here that I could access. It's a part of the, it's part of the output as well. So you could do that if you want to, or you could label it if you wanted to. It takes more time. If you want to label that, right? I could go over here and lay, you know, do an annotation and label, you know, have a label for how, how what the riser or what the length is, right? Like an annotation, like text. I just label it. Different categories. Of that. Just takes another, an, an, again, another step. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It does. Okay. Um, so r really, if you have questions, please ask them. But in general. What I've done, very simplistic stuff in our template function, which is, you know, multiple types of, you know, I've got um, <clears throat> a rectangle duct, I've got round duct, I've got some reducer things. Um, um, oh, I already had one, round duct with riser. Um, rectangle duct, uh, I don't think, yeah, with riser. I already had that built, but. Um, and then you, you, you need to count items. You can build them to count with different symbols, and as you count them, you guys were talking about this earlier um, about the different symbols the you count them and they're there you know what I mean so you right. find things you count them you choose what you want to count and you count them and then if you need more function on that right then you build a, an assembly or drag the assembly from uh, you know bridge into here and you can build those assemblies on the fly so sure. hey, you guys haven't you haven't added that feature with how uh, the count yeah it was kind of a starting with time a blue beam with that oh yeah, we have that. We call it pattern search. So you want to search for a specific symbol or a specific, you know, designator. Uh, yeah, we can do that. In fact, I did that on this. I think I did that on this drawing. But um, I can. It, it's we call it pattern search. No, and sorry. Have, okay, that part's great. I, I meant when you when you're counting an item, it actually sequences it, so it would be one, two, three, four. Oh. It actually tags the drawing with the you know your. Your Problem. number, yeah, yeah, your actual. Yes, if you need them in a order, a sequence order. That's yeah. a function of the the properties of that. So I can say when I do a count, um, um, I want to do a sequence number, which then shows up in my preview. All I have to do is put a percent sign in there, and then automatically they're they're sequ uh, Hold on, let me redo that so you can see it. Hold on, that's too transparent. Let's do that. So now you can see that I've got a sequence number, and when I count them, 
it'll put a number next to them as I count them in whatever sequence you want to do it in. Perfect. You could even put the text in front of that, you know, what, whatever that is. Right. So if that's a specific size, you could put that text in there along with the sequence number so it shows up on the drawing as well. Good deal. And, that's, and you pre-do that, so when you use it, it's automatically set up to do that. You don't have to do that every time, right? Right, correct. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's easy. Awesome. You can even make the text different color than the symbol if you want to. Most people want to keep it the same, but if you wanted to change that and you wanted to say, oh, my text color is something other than this, it defaults to the same color as your symbol, but you could change the color of that if you need to, or you can change the size of the text next to it. You can make it bigger or smaller, or you can make the size of the point bigger or smaller. So very flexible there to get the kind of the results that you want to see on the drawing. Good deal. Now, now if, you're, if you had to change the size of that 20 by 12 duct to 20 by 10, is it the same? All of them or one of them? Just one of them. So here's the thing. When I do a count, they're all connected together. If I want to split this off and change it to something else, I can do that. Um, I need the, we, have, we have multiple editing styles. Um, we have a simple editing and we have an advanced editing. Let me look at what uh, editing function I'm in. I'm going to go to the advanced editing function. So when I want to edit this, like Curtis did, when he did edit points and he moved the points of that slab around, well, same thing, but he was in the simple editing. I'm going to the advanced editing, and I'm going to draw a box around that one, and I'm going to change it uh, to, I'm going to split it off. So uh, I'm going to split this off into a new measurement so it's by itself. And I am now done with that. And now it's separate. It's all by itself. And then I can say, oh, that's something else. I can change its name. I can assign a different whatever it is to it. Let's just say it's some, something different so we can really see. I'm going to change it to this. I'm going to assign this to it. And now you can see it's something completely different. Um, and so I've reassigned that to something else. Perfect. Yeah, so you, you can do that kind of function, yes. And just out of curiosity, like so, you have these. So you have the twenty by twelve, which have have manual inputs, right? Um, let's say you had items in that assembly that were automated, and you wanted to overwrite one of those automated values with a manual entry. Would that ruin your automated feature for the rest of the? You know, if it learns, does it, does it learn that you want to overwrite that manually, or does it maintain the automatic link even though you overwrote it this one time? Are you overriding just one of the variables? Yeah. Okay, so what um, what happens in bridge, can we get back to my monitor or is this a problem? Make Curtis the presenter? Yeah, why don't you make me the presenter very quickly? Hang on one second. Make Curtis the presenter. Okay. Okay, so let's see here. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Now, yep. Okay, so let's go out and do a measurement here very quickly. Um, actually, we can probably use one of these again, and we'll just, with the understanding, the system will warn me and tell me that I've already used this measurement. We're just going to use it again. Um, there's our warning. It says, you sure you want to do this? Sure. Uh, when I, you see the mappings now. And you yep. see where all these very, if I want to change one of these, I want to make this, uh, you know, a different concrete grade or something and overwrite what it's normally doing. The system gives you a big fat warning and it says you're overriding that value. It's going to permanently remove that assignment from this point forward because you're no longer saying I want that link. However, if you just want it to be one time, you have the option up here of saying I would like to make this a one time assignment. When you do that, I can make that change just this time. The next time I use the measurement, it restores back to its normal mapping. Okay. So you can override well, just one time if you want. Sure. And that's in the, the bridge in the sage side. But if you're talking right. about in the move over so we can see the quantity list, Curtis, if you're talking about, you know, if you had variables there in your quantity, right, in your extension, any takeoff, and they were 
you, you had some default variables that were set at like 66, for example. You could change that as you take that measurement. That's part of the function right. of, oh, that variable needs to change. I can manually input it, and then that's all. that has no effect on what you're doing. It's just a variable that gets passed. That difference gets passed into the system, right? So as you're doing the measurement, all of this can be changed, et cetera, to reflect it. Once you're going to take it over to Sage, you either let the system automatically do whatever you set it up to do, or you can override it at that time, one, yeah. you know, and just make a change. Right, and there's no way to default, kind of lock. Let's say we had an administrator versus a, you know, there's no protection to where your administrator would have all the automated locked assemblies and the users, every time they would manually override, it would automatically be a one-time assignment. There's no way to set that up to where... No, there there isn't, huh? Okay. You, you see what I'm saying? I want to protect the... Yep, yep. Police, um, but, but still allow them the freedom to override them. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. But no, that isn't in the system. Okay. A lot of training there. Make sure everyone knows what one-time assignment is. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Not a big deal. Um. Are you okay. guys going to show us overlay a little bit? Yeah, David, let's return well, I'm back I'm actually running David. out of time. It's after it's after 10. I've got another oh, um, meeting. Okay. Okay, yep. Lee, the only other question I had for you then really was uh, um, password protection. So we, we have login uh, protection on Sage. How does that work when you just open a file uh, with Bridge or with Dimension? Does it, does it prompt you for a password to get into that file, or are you kind of bypassing the the Sage login credential. Yeah, we don't have access to the Sage login uh, security system. That's right, so do you have your own? or how, basically No, we don't. Like we, huh. You can edit there the file, a, no problem. Yeah, there is no uh, there is no security on the on the Dimension takeoff side. Okay, so you're just using the files themselves and... Um, Interesting. It's not protected by Timberland though. Because you're going into a Timberline file and you can override it without. Correct. Like meaning, if if I was not an estimator, I could still go in there and overwrite if I had this program, though. So, so first, the odds of them having the program in the first place are limited. But never mind. That should be right. You have to have a <laughs> license key, right? You have to have a license yeah, key to be able to get to it, have right. it installed, and <laughs> we just won't give people licenses. <laughs> you can change Timberline without actually being in Timberline. Correct. You can change Timberline without being in Timberline. Okay. Uh, and you do have this option of accounts when you scan the drawing for uh, pattern, like yes. you, right? Yes, actually, it's probably the best there is. Um, you, you, we can do, we call it pattern search. You can do, uh, look for multiple patterns. Uh, uh -huh. You can also do it on multiple drawings at the same time, and we do it in the background for you. So you could, you know, let's say you had multiple drawings, you know, <laughs> floors or whatever, find the search, to do the first search on the main floor, uh, that would all get saved, and then you can say, search for all of these symbols on the other five floors, and it would do that automatically for you and do it in the background and find everything, and then you, it would present it to you. You still have to review it, right? Correct. We don't automatically count anything. You still would review it, make sure it all matches, and then you could count the things like that. But yes, we do have that. Now, let's say you have another drawing, because this is very typical for us. You have the second floor and the third floor and the fifth floor, they're all the same. Uh, I do the second floor. Can I copy the entire second floor to the new drawing and then just change the WBS to uh, third floor and have that maintain all measurements, or is it going to cause some problems in, in overriding and duplication? Uh, uh, you can, you, in the takeoff, you can copy from yeah. one floor to another. And it, yeah, you would assign your WBS. You'd assign your WBS code uh, in Bridge when you when you send it over in Bridge. Okay. But yeah, I can show you that actually, if you want. If David leaves, I can I can show you the uh, some of those functions. Well, then get out of here, David. Jeez. Okay, gotta go. <laughs> thank, hey, you. thank you, David. Appreciate thank it. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's just do that. We'll go to the uh, second floor here. Here's here's a take up that's already been done of a bunch of different rooms and sections and so forth. Uh, I'm going to uh, we use what is called now we have control panels. You see these panels here? These are dockable. You can move these things around. You can uh, put them on other monitors. There are four control panels. And then you can load up in each control panel any controls you want. There's a whole selection of controls. One that we have is called favorites. 
So I'm going to turn on the favorites control panel here. And favorites is very useful for doing uh, different, and again, we're, you know, David's much more an expert on the mechanical side, but I'll just show you using these examples. Sure. Um, if I wanted to do this, it, let's say this is the second floor, now I want to take, you know, third floor is exactly the same, but I'd like to move all that stuff over there, copy it. The way we do that is we use favorites. So what I'll do is I'll go to the multi-select, and I will simply draw a square around all the measurements that I want. And then I'm just going to drag that over to what's called a project favorite, the whole thing. Now it cool. sets up all 207 measurements here. They're all there. And I'm going to right click, change the name, and I'll say that this is a master floor just so that I know what I'm using it for, etc. Now when I go to the other drawing, I can literally just grab the project favorite and drag it over. You see the outline there? Yep. Just drag the outline in, drop it, and the system will copy all of those measurements, all individually. They're all individually available, and uh, and then drop them in on the new floor. Oh, there perfect. You so your master floor isn't isn't going to be bridged to anything. It's just available to you as a as a yep. copy. To yeah. Totally yeah. separate, copied every individual measurements there, et cetera. You can do whatever you want with it now. Awesome. And and those will be the master floor. Is that a is that a per job in favorites, or is that again? Yeah, when you when you do a project favorite, it is per project. In other words, these disappear when you go to a different project. Now, I could make it a global favorite. For instance, let's go up here to annotations. Let's grab a text annotation and say that this is uh, approved or something of that nature. And I can take this, and I can drop it into a global favorite, for instance. Now, yep. global favorite says, I'd like to save this across projects, make it permanent. So now, you know, I can go over to the second floor here or wherever we were uh, and just grab that thing and drop it in. It's not and, just you know, anything, you understand, like, just anything you want. So a global means okay. it crosses projects. This means it's only good for this project. That's perfect. So if I drop this into global, then, of course, I could use it uh, across other projects, too. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and, and so now, and I'm guessing that you can, like, there's a way for me to download. For example, right? Right. You do the detail takeoff. Correct. And then put it in the global. Okay. So, so let, I'm assuming there's a way to take my global favorites and uh, share them with all four of our users. Is that a? Well, if you guys are sharing across a network, then all of that yeah. stuff's available to everybody. Okay. So we can we can choose to save to the you know to each other or the global. Well, automatic? no, it's automatic. It's going to be automatic if you're sharing across the the network. Then you uh, you get to see you know all your measurements here, et cetera. All those different, a different number. Yeah. Doesn't matter what project you're on. You'll be sharing across the database. Everybody will have access to to anything they want. I like it. Okay, and if if for example I have uh, floors three through five are the same, do I uh, adjust it here? Do I multiply here, or no, after I send it to the Stage. Just what he just did. So well, it's kind of up to you. Favorite, you and can, then you drag it in on each floor. You know, you could you could set up have, an assembly. Oh, you could set up an assembly. Curtis, she, so she she doesn't have right. a plan for each one. Right. She has one drawing showing plans two through five. You would still recommend right. that we copy that plan three times, and then do well, that. Well, no, there are two ways to do it. Now you could set up your assemblies, right? So that right. there's right. a variable here that says multiplier or whatever. And then you do one, and you just type in three copies, and then, of course, everything's multiplied by three. I mean, right. that's Every, one way yeah. to do it, right? But you could also replicate the drawings and then just, you know, do the multiple, do the takeoff across the drawings. Right, if they're not exactly so, the same. Oh, they're not exactly the same. Well, then, yeah, if they're not, then you're replicating. I would probably just put up, you know, in your assembly some type of multiplier and multiply right. the stuff. Yep. Yeah, no, without a doubt, if it's one drawing, it makes sense. Now, that uh, you want to see that, that auto count feature? Yes. Let me show you that right away. Some of this stuff, obviously, Dave is the expert on the, on the takeoff side, but I can show you some of this. Let's do, uh, let's see, I'm going to count uh, use some of the stuff we've already got set up here. Let's look at, uh, say we're going to count smoke detectors. So, 
let's go to the electrical side here. Here's an electrical drawing. Now, the way that our, let me get rid of this thing here, favorites. Uh, the way that the count works, it's, the problem with the auto count is that many systems, you know, they create this thing where it just kind of, it does the count for you, and then there it is, and you really don't get to interact with it very much. And as an estimator, you need to approve this stuff, just because when, when we do a count on these kinds of, uh, like, PDF drawings and stuff, you definitely, uh, are uh, just looking at ink. It's like black on white. That's we. Those aren't CAD objects. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't. The drawing doesn't know anything other than it's a shape on a paper, piece of paper. So we have to analyze that and try to figure out how close we can get to figuring out what's, you know, what's matching that by verse, by virtue really of the percentage of black on white and all this stuff. So, so it's an inexact science. Therefore, you don't want a system that's going to just say, "Here's the count, go." because you have to verify that you trust it, right? Did you approve of it? So we have a system that's pretty interactive, and some of it is actually patented. It's pretty pretty slick. Nobody else does it this way. So we're looking for smoke detectors. I'm going to go to the, uh, let's see, the drawing tab, and you see a uh, pattern search option here. Now, I can search the whole drawing, but obviously you'll search all this too, which is a waste of time. So. I'm, uh, typically, people pick out an area to search. Now, you can add a polygon. A lot of systems don't have this, where you can literally go in and, and draw the line just very, very tightly around where you want to search. Or in this case, I'm just going to do a rectangle. And we'll call this the main search area. And the system is wanting me to tell it where the search will take place. So we're going to do it right in there. Now, I can just click out of this to get rid of that. And I can bring it back anytime I want just to show where that search area is. And that can be used for many different things, that same search area. But I'm ready to go now. So I'm going to say start the pattern search. And it says draw a rectangle around the pattern you want to search for. So we're going to zoom in here and find uh, here's a smoke detector. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle around that. And the system opens up a dialog. And it says here's the pattern you're searching for. Now, I'm going to search immediately, not in the background. I'll explain a little bit here what the difference is. And you notice the main search area is one of those that I just created. Now, you could do the entire drawing. You could actually, you could just say, while you, while you search, just draw a rectangle around what you're doing, or pre-build it, which is what I did here. So I have this main search area. You can search all four rotations, north, south, east, west, et cetera. Um, but in this case, I'm, you know, when I'm looking for smoke detectors, it knows that because that's what I was sitting on here at the time I started this. I can obviously press the select button and go in and find all the other measurement types and pick something else if I wanted to. But at this said, point, I'm going to start the search. When you said north, so, south, east, west, did you mean if it was upside down, it would still get it? Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Now it's found all of the different, you know, elements or objects that it thinks come very, very close based on this 80% level. And you can change that, modify it, and so forth. But as I look through these, it becomes pretty obvious that one of these is not the same as the others. Very close, but it's a heat detector. So I'm going to turn that off. That's why this is important to see these things. So you can, you can manipulate it and use the information to your benefit. So I now have a bunch of these uh, smoke detectors. But before I take the count, I'd like to review this on the drawing. So I click. And now all of those pieces that it found, all of those elements, are right here. You can see them throughout the drawing. This one, the red one, is the heat detector. That means it's not selected. I could double click and select it here or not. That's up to you. So you can still, you know, still make your selections while you're reviewing on the drawing. And if Here's it missed one, you can add one. How do you add that? Uh, you don't add it, but you say if it had not been selected and you want it selected, you can double click on it and turn it on. Okay. No. Yeah. You know, what, what if it never popped up? What if there's like something on the drawing right now that was never re recognized? You mean there's something that it didn't find? Right. Well, you can either change the criteria. In other words, you can take that count and you can start saying, "Look, it's just it didn't find." Let's go back and and bring that up again. Uh, you could start changing this accuracy thing, right, right here, and reduce the accuracy this percentage. And if you start making this 50%, for instance, it's going to find a bunch of other stuff that it will 
uh, see if it matches or not. So the criteria can be modified uh, right. as you go, and it will find other elements. Otherwise, you can start a new search. Right. Right. But there's, so you okay, just draw rectangle. Yeah, there's no way to draw add a rectangle like, around no that add particular an thing to your account. Say that again now. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way to, to simply let's say there was one that it missed with your 80%. Um, rather than going back to making it more sensitive, could you simply add that one? Yes. I. You, what the easiest thing is just to start up another count, right? And all you do is you go highlight that particular object. And then it will find everything that, that looks like that. And if that one didn't get picked the first time, it'll get picked this time because you drew the rectangle around it. Strange. You follow? Simple, right? Well, no. So, yeah, that's fine. You just can't, you can't manually add yeah, one. You have, to, you have to do that after. No, because the problem is it doesn't know what you're adding. You've already done the criteria of what we're looking for. Now, you, just by drawing something around it, those are all pixels to us. We don't know what that is. Sure. Right, and so you might not even draw the square the same. Do you see what I mean? It, you're blending things that haven't been cri the criteria set up for before. So the best thing to do is take the count, and then if you see that one that didn't get counted, just draw a rectangle around it and do the pattern search. Just start and draw a rectangle around it. It'll find it, and it'll also find anything else that's exactly like that one. Right, yes, but did. I know you'll find it individually. Is there a way to combine the two so they are the same count? Can you tell it that? Well, are... remember, it, it won't be the same count, but you will have that same item, and of course, that item can be combined, right? You can right. summarize those items together, and okay. over in Sage, that, that's, that's kind of what we're getting at. Is say yeah. you make multiple counts, um, how do you then combine them into the same item? Um, yeah, because you can go into your master list, right? Your your master list here, and you can start summarizing these things up. Right and combining them, and, and so forth, so that sure. you can get totals for individual parts that are summarized together, and so on. Okay. And this can be you can sort this and create all different kinds of configurations you can save, and support, and sort, and so forth. So generally speaking, you should be able to find you know what you're looking for there. Perfect. But in this case, I've got this now. I've turned this one uh, off, and we've gone out and we've reviewed another drawing. But we have another feature that's very powerful. This little thing right here is a drag to expand the display area. And what this means, you know, if you've got fixtures and you've got uh, wiring harnesses or something coming out of those things, sometimes you can't, you know, you need to see what that harness is or something specific. So this won't change the, the uh, selection criteria, but it will show you more information around each of these that you are counting. And when you do that, you can start looking at harnesses or whatever else information is around, but you notice Here's a very useful aspect. My criteria for the search was tight. It didn't allow for this A, which is an auxiliary. So right. we got another piece in here that was counted just because of the way I did the search. So I'm going to turn that off too. Now I've got my smoke detectors, and I can say save. A lot of systems, once you do that, you have to start completely over and now start counting the auxiliaries. You have to start counting the heat detector. Well, since we already have it here, I'm just going to say save and continue put your count out there. Now I'm going to go turn off the heat detector and while I'm in here I'm just going to go out and select the auxiliary and I'm going to save and continue that count and then I have the heat detector left over so I'll go find the heat detector count and save that and I've got my total. Okay. And that's how, now the, the beauty of it is when you start these things um, Now let's see here. Here's the next four. When you start these, you notice you can search immediately, which is what I did, or you can search in the background. If you search in the background, the system pre-builds the search over here, and it does it in the background. See how it's doing it? You actually get that progress bar moving across. Well, it does the search in the background, and you can start doing multiple, multiple searches. And once you've done those searches, uh, for instance here, you can see what it found, what it didn't find. You can pick what you want. You can save that count. But, but the beauty of it is once, yeah, once you get these um, set up and you've got these different uh, uh, pattern searches that you've done successfully, you can now go in the system, oops, I'm sorry, and pick let's say two patterns that I'm going to count and I can now search multiple drawings 
for both of those patterns that I've checked. And now I can choose all the drawings I want out of the entire list and as many searches as I've done. I have to do them once. And now when I say search, all of that searching takes place in the background and it restores you to the foreground to continue doing your work while these things search in the background account. And so literally you can be doing all kinds of searching in the background while the system is while you're working in the foreground. Yep, exactly. And we're the only people that do that. That's unique to uh, e takeoff. Yep. And hopefully 100% accurate. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? The truth is that's why we have that real nice dialogue that lets you see all this stuff because it, it may not be 100% accurate because it depends on the criteria, you know, how that drawing, uh, it, you know, some of these drawings are not very clean, etc. So you do get to review those before you send, you make the count absolute. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And, and, and yep. like you said, you can actually dial it down to be 50% accurate. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. How low does it go? Does it go down to 20% accurate? Well, what it, what it does is it says, it says, we would like to match something 80% of the black on white. And so when you say 80%, it means it's going to look for things that have the very same ratio of ink, black to white. And right, so yeah. you can start getting further and further from that, and then it will just start being more lenient, and it'll show you more stuff. You can, of course, right. turn it off and, and select other stuff or whatever. But the idea is that you can finesse that so that you get a pretty good feel that you're getting them all. Because once you start getting things that are not even related, then you know you probably covered them all, you know. Right, but that, that range is like if you put it on 1%, it would just give you pretty much everything on the... Yeah, it probably give you everything, yeah. Okay. So, so 50 is probably the lowest you'd recommend going. <laughs> yeah, we generally start out anywhere from 70 80% as a rule. That seems to work pretty good. Perfect. Um, question regarding the line thickness. Maybe it was a question for Dave. Uh, if there is a different size of the duct we're taking off, well, yeah, you mean you mean if you if you're uh, well, here's an example. I, I tell me if I'm understanding it, but let's say uh, uh, let me think. He might have something in here that he set up. Here's a foundation wall scaled. What what that means is when I take off the foundation wall, I just assume that uh, let's go up here. Yeah, so if you have an eight inch width, it'll be eight inches on the plans. Yeah, that's the idea. So if I come up here and I say let's let's uh, take this off. Where am I here? Well, I don't have to be that accurate, I guess. But now we've got our measurement, and it's asking for the wall height, uh, mm -hmm. and it's asking for the wall width, and I say 12 inches, and the wall volume. You notice how. That wall is now 12 inches wide. Perfect. Okay. And if I change it to uh, 5 inches wide, then the wall changes. Now, this is done in the extension. We have extensions which are like assemblies. We're one of the only systems that really does have the power to build an assembly-like structure just like Sage. And so this is done with a certain variable that automatically will allow you to do this. So you, you actually have to set it up to do the wall with. but but, yeah, uh, but we once can add you that variable that to way. any of our assemblies, right? Yeah, you any assembly can be set up to do this kind of thing. You're right. Okay. Perfect. Hey, Curtis, it, this it, is Dennis. Uh, I've got to start another demo here in about two minutes, so I'm going to have to. Gonna have to <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, guys, I, does this give you a pretty good feel, an overview of the system and some of the capabilities? Yeah, how do we start yeah. our trial? Like, what's the next step? Well, uh, if you wanted to start a trial of this, then, uh, Dennis, I tell you what, uh, you can go out to the uh, uh, what do you yeah, call you it? Can go to my e takeoff website, website. Yeah. and if you okay. go to the e takeoff website, uh, you will see this button that says "Click here, free basic viewer." Free basic viewer, okay. Yep, and now it says download. And when you download, it'll give you instructions. When you download it, you're downloading a a little demo version of e takeoff. It's a viewer, and then there's a button. At the top of it, it's just what you see on e-takeoff. It's right here, and it says trial. And when you see that, you'll see a red button here. When you click that, it turns on all the features for 15 days. Perfect. And now, once you've done that, 
uh, Dennis, you would need to contact me, uh, and then uh, we could get them a trial of Bridge. Bridge, there is no trial of Bridge because you ha you obviously have to have the right version of Sage. What version of Sage do you have? Uh, I can tell you. Nine. Nine point three. Yeah, you need to upgrade to thirteen or fourteen. Actually, fourteen point one, and 14. there's 1. an up yeah, and an update needs to be installed. So the problem with the, with the trial on Bridge is that you have to have the right versions of Sage sure. that have the updates inside Sage to work with us. But if we, uh, so we can, can work with updates, Dennis. We, we can work you, with it's Dennis possible to see to get if a we trial can Bridge as well. Say that again. I said if we do go and get the updates to four fourteen point one and and. Um, uh, sorry, upgrade and update before we do our trial. It is possible to get a trial bridge or no? Yeah, we could. We do that through the dealer. So with Dennis, we'd have to work through Dennis to get you the, the bridge trial. And, okay. and, uh, and Dennis, why don't you give me a call? Yeah. Dennis, why don't you give me a call when you are uh, uh, free and we can discuss how that works. Yeah, I can do that. And then we're going to have Gary Simpson uh, work with you guys. He's one of okay, our consultants. Okay, perfect. That would be, that would be and, good. And, and, you and Curtis somebody knows him. He's been trained on it. So yep. uh, I think... You guys will get a lot more out of it if you engage with Gary for, you know, pick some number, three, four hours uh, to get it installed correctly, to learn what you got, and maybe work with some of the stuff we did today again um, so that you kind of get your feet on the ground rather than trying to figure it out on your own. Sure. Will he be able to come over here or it will be again? Yeah, I don't, he, he, he could. Online. It wouldn't be worth it for just three or four hours. He's, he comes out of uh, Oregon. But uh, he can do online just like we did today. Um, he's going to be able to see your screen. He'll be able to see his screen. So it'll be just like he's sitting there and save you some money. Good deal. Uh, I and, like it. And we'll have it for 15 days as well, right? All together. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. We'll get. We'll take. We'll, we'll make sure you have what you need. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank, Thank you very you. much, everybody. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. You too. I'll give you a call. Bye. I'll probably call you after lunch. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.